So thanks so much, um, Marie. Really appreciate uh, the invite uh, to the Women of Fedora uh, weekend and, and to talk at it. It's an absolute privilege to do it. Um, whether I have much insight now is another thing. Um, so I'll just kind of chat around my experiences and, and so far and um, things I've learned, uh, challenges that um, I faced, and a few accomplishments that we've that we've made um, as well. So a little bit about myself. Um, my name is Sarah Finn and I'm an Agile coach uh, with the CPE team, so the Community Platform Engineering team, um, which look after a lot of the infrastructure within Fedora and also CentOS. Um, I joined in November uh, 2019, came in shortly after IFA, uh, our product owner, who gave a great talk yesterday, absolute inspiration. Um, and it's, both myself and Aoife are, are the only women at the moment on the team. Um, and the, the guys that we work with are amazing. They really champion us and, and really support us um, in all, all the different things that we do and, and the new things that we're, we're jumping into as well. So that's really, really positive. It's a great team to work with. Um, I'm also a part of the Agile Practice team within Red Hat as well. So it's a group of um, Agile practitioners. Um, it's growing nearly you know every month or so there's there's so many there so it's great to have um, that community as well within red hat to be able to, to bounce off a few ideas and that um, i'm a, a mother of two uh, great girls um, addison is 10 and isabel is four coming up to five now next month um, so definitely the the juggle of, of balance in the career with, with family life uh, can be quite challenging sometimes um, I'm from Waterford in Ireland as well, down the sunny southeast. Um, and I'm very much, um, I suppose, an advocate for a team um, as an agile coach. I think that's, there's enough said uh, about that. But, but genuinely, um, I'm all about the team and, and trying to ensure that when people are working together, that they're happy with how that's going. They're feeling quite content um, and feeling valued and um, getting a chance to, to celebrate their um, accomplishments. So how I became involved in Fedora. So I joined, as I said, um, Red Hat um, in November 2019, um, and I joined the CPE team, so the Community Platform Engineering team, as their Agile coach. Um, so open source was, was definitely something I was familiar with um, in other organizations, and there was always that kind of conversation when we were discussing technology and and different uh, platforms and, and tools to use um, and architecture, architecture of our solutions, did we want to go down the, the open source route um, and, 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 and go that route? But I never really got a chance to deep dive into it. Um, so when I joined um, Red Hat and CPE, it was a huge learning curve for me and it opened up so many conversations and, and just, a, it was mind blowing to be honest, just seeing the, all of this, um, uh, great work being done by such a large community, like a vast um, amount of across different um, technologies and things like that. It was, it was just amazing to see. And also I became uh, accustomed to IRC, uh, so I was on that pretty quickly um, and got used to uh, collaborating with the team and reaching out to them on that as well. Also I got to meet my, my Thelma, uh, so you can see in the chat there, um, Aoife and myself, the colors of Sam and Louise. Uh, we haven't drove off that cliff yet, thank God. <laughs> but uh, we're great, we're a great team, I have to say, and, and we bounce off each other. We have that great, great bond and, and great support. So as I said, um, joining Red Hat, joining CPE, joining, I suppose, into the world of open source and communities in regards to Fedora and CentOS, it was absolutely mind blowing um, to, to delve into uh, this area um, because my background and my experience would have very much been organizational business based um, that that this was just mind-blowing to see lots of different people contributing together and um, just you know because they like doing it and they valued gaining ideas from other people and sharing um, their, their insights it was just amazing to see and something I definitely wanted to explore a lot more so why is it so mind-blowing? Um, and I thought about this over the last couple of days and I thought, okay, it's going back over my experience. Um, you know, what, what experience did I have in, in the last uh, few steps and, and decades? Not too many decades, but one or two. 
<laughs> so my background, um, I actually started out, I did um, a Bachelor's of Business Studies in Marketing um, and I went straight into the, into the uh, marketing field um, in and around, God, probably, how old am I now? <laughs> probably about 13, 12 years ago, if not longer. Um, so, like, I loved, I loved marketing. I loved, as, as even as a kid, watching advertising, advertising ads on telly. We used to play a game called ads, and you used to have to guess uh, which ad it was, which product they were trying to sell, which brand. Um, so I kind of uh, gra uh, graduated towards that. And what really, for me, when I, when I thought about it, it was very much around the, the psychology of marketing. Um, so why would somebody uh, buy Nike over Adidas? Why would someone buy um, a Samsung over an iPhone? Um, it was really, I really was intrigued by, you know, the decisions people were making. Um, and, I got, and I got a chance then to study a lot into emotional and rational pieces of, of marketing and, and that mindset. And what was really important to me as well um, was the ethics. And that has always been important since I've, since the, since I've, I've grown up. My, my family would definitely instill um, uh, a kind of an ethical mindset um, in everything that I did. Um, I was always there to, I suppose, support people um, and to ensure that people were getting the right information. And if they were deciding to buy a product or a service, um, that they were buying it for the right reasons. So ethics was a big part for me, um, in, as I said, in my life, but definitely in my, in my career as well. However, the experience was a lot, uh, it was much different than, than what I thought it might be. Um, this is a picture of a pressure cooker, <laughs> if people don't know uh, what this is. Um, and when I got more and more into the kind of corporate and business world, um, all I sensed all the time was pressure. Like constant um, keeping things going, keeping on that um, that hamster wheel all the time, very little time for actually collaboration, for reaching out to help people, um, to the general kind of human aspect of it was, was, was really, was non-existent. You were really reaching out to people to ask them to do something for you or to, to you know, to gain something. There was very little um, of the kind of kindness and and, and human um, element to, to the corporate world, the work, work, corporate world that I experienced. Um, a lot of people um, felt, you know, to get ahead, maybe they, you know, had to take credit for everything. There was very much an I, I, I um, mentality more so than we. So it's not, as I said, coming from my background, I was very much, um, you know, wanting to, come together and, and to kind of build on, on on things together, not to single myself out as, you know, I'm going to achieve this and I'm going to do this. So I was very much, you know, it takes a, a community, a team uh, to, to build anything of, of, of value or to, to progress us as, as humans and as, as uh, goals for the organization um, forward. So then I discovered Agile. And that was another moment where my mind was just absolutely blown because it was um, a kind of a project management uh, platform or approach um, that really was centered around people. So within, when I came across Agile, I was moving more from the marketing side of things and um, more so into the project management side of things. So the marketing, as we know, became huge online and digital marketing and all that. It was very little traditional. Um, so my role started becoming into more web development, apps, um, and that kind of thing, very much front-end um, solutions. And I really found my feet in, in, in project management, but I never liked the, the traditional project management of um, a date where we picked from the sky and when we need uh, a certain solution over the line by, um, or we need you know, this amount of, of hits on the, on the website for um, to ensure that this is a, a valuable um, a valuable opportunity that we've gone gone down that route. This was agile to me was was something that just made sense. You know, it allowed people to check in with each other. It created opportunities for collaboration. It shared accountability across um, an organization uh, for the delivering of, of of value and for the delivering of the value to our users. Um, so it was just it just made complete sense, and it created a safe environment where people felt they could um speak up and share their thoughts and views and if they felt something wasn't worth doing 
there was there's an opportunity to say that if they felt um they wanted to work on something in particular that they'd like to work on that there was an opportunity to do that as well so really i was i found that i was more comfortable being in the background and supporting others and um, to take those leaps and, and to move forward and push outside of, of the of the comfort zones so then when i came across uh, Red Hat and uh, open source of Fedora in 2019 when I joined last year. Again, as I said, my mind, my mind was just blown because it all came together. Like the four foundations of Fedora just really sat with me so well. So freedom, you know, freedom to to chat, to to share ideas, to be innovative, to collaborate, and um, to just be really open and honest. And I was just music to my ears it was great friends so like first you know first and foremost that it's a group of people that are friends so not just people that are working together on um uh bills and packages and upgrades and all of that but that they're actually friends working together like that really i really love seeing that and features as well and first so it was just all this innovation and this lovely warm environment um that I just felt everything came together. So that's why my mind was blown when I became involved with Fedora, because I finally found a career in a company and a community that shared my values where people were at its core. So I was, like there was times where I felt, God, was I more um did I should I went down maybe the teacher route or the, the nurse route? <laughs> All I wanted to do was kind of care for people and and ensure I try my best I suppose to have, have people have a nice day each day you know they say kind of you smile at somebody it might brighten their day and um, but the more I thought about it was like was that I you know I love the world of, of um, innovation and technology um, and organizations and business and all, how much we can do together and um, when we come together but definitely I feel this is I've, I've, I've kind of come to terms this is my calling in regards to bringing a little bit of humanity and um, into the the organizations and ensuring that it, it's kept in communities as well so how have i contributed to fedora so far so as i said i'm very much behind the scenes but always in the wings supporting cpe and its stakeholders as well so as, as an Agile coach, um, as you can see, there's a wide remit on, on, what, on what we do and, and how we do it. Um, so it's a lot of coaching. There's a lot of time spent on just observing and seeing how things are going. Is there anything that's frustrating or challenging people or a team? And just giving them the opportunity then to come together to discuss how they might try to resolve that. Is there another new approach they could take? Is there something they want to try out? So it's just that extra support for teams um, to maybe come up for air a little bit every so often um, and to have a chat around where they'd like to go and, and what is, I suppose, their, um, where do they feel comfortable? You know, where are they content? If they're feeling quite under, if they're feeling under pressure, if they feel like there's no downtime, how can we, um, uh, what changes can we make to try um, and improve that? So I'm there, as I said, coaching, mentoring, um, again, with, with any transformation or any new way of, of dealing with things, it takes a lot of um, change um, and it takes a lot of time for sometimes um, for people to kind of build the mindset and behaviours and build their resilience. So they're quite, so they're open to new things um, and um, new approaches as well. So at the heart of everything I do, as I said, is my motivation is always around helping people. Um, so from the skills that I use in, on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm there to try and reduce stress and um, to create more compassion for ourselves. Um, more so, that's first, first and foremost, um, that we feel you know, that we are good enough um, and that we give every day is good enough. And then once we have that, then we'll definitely start feeling compassion for others. Um, and, and, and help each other uh, when we're going through difficult times. Become more open and real. Um, so creating um, a, a safe space and, and opportunities to be open, to flag difficulties that are, that are happening um, and actually giving people a reality check, you know, in what is possible and what's not possible. Um, and just going back to the drawing board around it as well. 
as I said, people to feel good enough that every day, you know, they what they're contributing to the community um, or what they're, uh, you know, contributing in, in, in all their life is good enough. Everyone is doing their absolute best. So to feel valued and heard. So everything that you're doing each day is valued um, and that you feel heard, that you can have a, a conversation or um, flag any concerns that you might have and also that you feel a sense of accomplishment. So I think if we were if we were to, to really reflect on things, we want to feel um, that we're accomplishing things um, within ourselves, you know, that we're moving forward. Um, so to do that, sometimes we just have to stop a little bit and reflect and go, you know what, God, you know, I um, I got that over the line today and it was really, really challenging. Or I reached out to um, a colleague or, or contributor and we, we worked really well on that. I was really nervous to do it, but I still did it and, and, and we got that over the line. Um, so that's what I'm trying to encourage is, is just people to break down those barriers a little bit and um, to be really compassionate with each other um, and to bring the more human side to it as well. There's a quote here that I think I came across um, a couple of months ago that for me, it, it, it sums up what success is for me. Um, and the last three lines is, 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 is what sticks with me. So to know even one life is breathed easier because you have lived, that is to have succeeded. So my, um, my motivation, as I said, is people. It's not around um, going up a corporate ladder or anything like that. As if, if I put a smile on someone's face or if people feel less stressed, after having a chat with me, happy day. I'm happy. I succeed that day. So what challenges did I face when I joined um, CPE and Fedora and, and the world of, of Red Hat as well? Um, so obviously I was a newbie, newbie to open source, newbie as well to uh, the world of software. As I said, a lot of my experience would have been front end solutions. Um, more so than the back end. Um, so this was, was hugely um, new for me. I was quite nervous around it. Um, but I knew, I suppose, that with the, the experience that I would have had in lots of different industries that I had to um, tweak and change, that at the end of the day, the, I suppose the philosophy, philosophy was still the same. It's around trying to um, encourage more uh, collaboration and address challenges and frustrations. Um, so yeah, it was like a fire hose, it really was. Um, and I think Lee, Lee uh, Griffin, uh, who's the CPE uh, manager, has said that to me, um, how's that fire hose going? And I think the fire hose was on a steady flow there <laughs> for a good three to four months of, of information. So, so what I couldn't get over was just the vastness of Fedora and the le like how far um, it spread, the amount of um, packages and tools and everything that was just there it was just i was in awe to be honest of all the talent and um, that's out there and how people were coming together and i really got to see that through irc um, and how people were collaborating um, and also on github and, and places like that as well so what i learned as, as well is definitely the relationships and the passion that was instilled within um within fedora um, and for me i suppose i never really understood that to, to that extent of what it is in, in, in Fedora. Because a lot of the time, as I said, my experience would have been in organizations. There was passion there, but it was from, you know, it, it, it was like, at the end of the day, it was a job, you know, that kind of way. But here, what I see is just this, as, and I think this heart sums it up, it's just this fire of passion um, for, you know, the, 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 the values that you have there. And it was really good to see that. But it took me a while to grasp you know, how people were uh, very passionate about it and, and um, to ensure that I was giving enough time and really taking that on board um, when I was chatting with, with, with various stakeholders and team members as well. Also wearing multiple hats. Um, so I came in uh, into this role as um, an agile coach, but my experiences would have been very much product owner, scrum master and uh, Kanban coach. Um, so this was my first role whereby I had to kind of step up a little bit and, and help out other people that were going to be in those roles. Um, so I was trying to juggle, how is I going to do that? Where do I step in? Where do I step out? Um, also navigating the different people that we needed to reach out to within CPE, within the Fedora community. Um, so how was, our, how was our relationships at that time? How can we improve them? 
um, what are the challenges there? And there were some challenges at that time as well, and how best to approach them, um, how best to, to go about it. Um, also, there was obviously uh, skepticism um, with this agile coach that came in. You know, what is what is Sarah's agenda? You know, what is the end agenda? Where does she want to get to? Um, and it takes time, you know, to build that trust. Um, but I think I have done that with the team, fingers crossed, that I really am, you know, just around supporting people to get um, things done and, and to do that in the most compassionate way uh, possible. Um, also, I was a mom, I was obviously, I'm <laughs> still a mom, that didn't drop. But as we all know, um, if you've experienced it before, starting a new role, um, you're talking at least six months. Well, for me, anyway, any new role that I started, six months it takes um, for you to feel, okay, I get it, I know where we're going, I know what's happening. Um, and it's all consuming. When you go into a new role, it's all consuming. And especially with this, with this agile coach role, because I wanted for the team and for people that I was interacting with and being very mindful um, that when I interacted with the team that any, you know, any things that we might have discussed and things like that might have impacted things in, in the community as well. So I wanted to ensure that everything that they experienced was a positive experience. So that was a lot of pressure that I put on myself um, at that time. Um, and the reason I, I wanted it to, to be as, as positive as possible was because of that skepticism sometimes with Agile and with other experiences some team members might have felt or some community members may have um, had an experience with, with Agile coaches or, or Scrum Masters and things like that. Um, I wanted to ensure that I was instilling that the team were the captains you know, of the ship, of the changes that were, they were making. I was just creating opportunities and suggesting different ways we, we might do that. Um, so obviously, as we, were, as we were kind of looking at everything, I wanted things to be uh, quite positive. So that took a toll on family life, uh, which, was, which was quite hard. Um, and I feel the mammy guilt and all that that happens with it. Um, but I have a great partner. Um, I have great, uh, a great family as well. And the colleagues have said within CP have been amazing. Um, but I just, you know, I'm now at a point where I can step back a little bit more um, and allow the, allow the team to, to move forward. Um, but I think it's great for the girls. And, and when I was doing this today, I was saying to Alison, I'm going to do a bit of fedora thing today. Um, she, was, she said, I'm really proud of you, ma'am, to do that. So, like, I won't get emotional now. But, you know, as, as I have, the, have daughters, I want them to, I suppose, pursue things and... And not feel, you know, that uh, that guilt sometimes, and, and to move forward and um, with their dreams of what they want to do as well. So, what victories did we achieve? So, we have had lots of victories um, within within CPE, and I suppose within the the Fedora community as well. Um, so there seems to be a lot more. Um, as an opportunity to collaborate, like within Fedora anyway, there's huge collaboration there, there's huge, huge transparency there. That, that's never, never, ever, ever been an issue. And again, that was a learning curve for me as well, because I come from an organization whereby there was a lot of meetings, closed meetings, where, you know, a set of people were invited into a meeting and everything was, you know, uh, maybe top secret until we could go out with, with something, um, kind of more formal you know what that announcement might be so to see you know an environment that was so transparent and open with what they were doing as i said it was just music to my ears and um, it was great to see that so really what the what this um illustrates is it's just a little bit more within the cpe uh, environment there just having a chat when we see these requests coming in when we have um, maybe bigger pieces of work that we'd like to work on um, you know, that we're having a chat around, okay, who do we need to work on this? What's going to be the outcome of it? And, um, you know, do we block off six weeks to get this work done? Or we, do we do little pieces of it over time? Um, or is it, you know, a, a year long thing? So it's just having that conversation to see what, um, what skills we need and, and what resources and what support is needed to ensure that we're delivering value and um, to the community that they can use um, at the end of at the end of that that period. It's all about balance. 
um, and we're always going to be there. Um, and I think within the team now, what I can definitely say, you know, within the team, that they've gotten into a mode of reflection and reviewing things that we're doing. So, for example, if we're having um, a meeting every week um, and we feel, you know what, I think we could change this up and gain more from it, team members are, are now speaking up and, and suggesting new ways of, of doing that, which is great to see. Um, uh, yeah, with, with IRC as well, um, I said I'm definitely on that, love it. Um, and I've also done a few, um, what are they called? <laughs> Upgrades. Uh, so Bipple has taught me through doing a few package upgrades for my Google Chrome and all that. So I'm delighted, uh, thrilled to, to get that done. Uh, we ask for a lot of feedback, and um, so you might see the the community engagement or community happiness um, uh, survey that goes out. So we set up a community happiness initiative uh, where by uh, members of CP and also representatives um, from the Fedora. Uh, community um, join a, a bi-weekly call and we look at ways on, on how things are going and how we can improve um, within the within the community as well. Um, the team are starting to look at, I suppose, different paths. So it's not just one path that we want to go down. There could be lots of different approaches to things. Um, and again, just having that opportunity to um, discuss that. So it's brilliant to see that. So that's definitely something that's become a more and more um, uh, the norm with, within the team. Also, the 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 man here, the, I don't know what he is, is he a Viking or something? I'm not too sure, but with the shield as well. So it's around trying to protect yourselves a little bit more as well. And, I, and I'm glad to see um, the team doing that. So being comfortable to say, no, we, 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 we can't do that. Or, or there's no the, there's no value in us doing that. Um, or yes, we can do that, but we can't do this. So it just reduces this ever growing backlog of to-do list, um, whereby we, we log off at the end of the day and think, oh my God, there's still another load <laughs> for me to do the next day. Um, that we look at, you know, what, is, what makes sense for us to do? Um, and, you know, what ensures that, as I said, we're creating that, that value to our community. Um, each day, each month, and, and each quarter. And we're taking time out to celebrate. So celebration is a big part um, and should be a big part of, of what you're doing on a, on a daily, not a, yeah, even a daily basis, but um, definitely quite regularly. Um, because at the end of the day, we do have a lot on our to-do list. Um, and if we just keep going, we never take any opportunity to, to see it, to celebrate how great we are and what we're doing and how we're improving people's lives. Um, so we definitely have, have done a lot of that um, in CPE as well. And I can definitely see the, the team becoming um, a lot more self-organized, um, whereby the, they may not lo no longer need an agile coach in, in the next couple of, of months because they're creating these opportunities themselves now organically, which is amazing to see. Um, and I feel very proud um, to see that as well. So as I said, really my role was just to ensure that they were creating these opportunities for themselves to address challenges and frustrations um, and try and um, include people um, into decision-making and um, being very open with, with what's happening and what's not. So my final thoughts is really for um, women, more women to come into tech, um, if that's something that they that they love to do. Um, it's around women and men championing each other and just coming together and, and to support each other in doing that. Um, and I can definitely say without a shadow of a doubt from my experiences with it within Fedora, um, on the develop lists, on, um, within CPE, um, the men that, that, uh, and the women have just been beyond supportive and very, very open to answering all my questions that they might think are very silly questions, but I don't care. <laughs> I'd ask them anyway. Um, and it's just brilliant to see. So I think the more and more um, we, we break down these barriers and have um, uh, create space uh, for more questions to be asked um, and for women to really champion themselves and just go for it. Um, and you know we'll be here to to support you um, along the way so that's it from me thanks so much for your time um 
not sure if it's any way valuable. <laughs> but again, I was I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Oh my gosh, you do not need to question if that was valuable. That was so awesome. I oh, love that. You. And I have like too many questions. Maybe. Okay. Like, <laughs> Go I for it. Thinking of more and more questions. Okay, so my first question is when did you first get involved? Like, when did you first get hired in tech? Or, like, when did you first get into tech? Okay. So hired into tech was probably 10 years ago with a consultancy firm um, in a college called Waterford Institute of Technology um, and they were very much around um, uh, website builds, apps builds, um, working, with, um, working with companies to really get into the mindset of their users and what, um, what value would bring to the users um, and things like that. So that was in around 10 years ago now. God, I'm getting old. <laughs> I want, I, I'm just, it feels like you're very, very early 20s. Early 20s. Very early. Very early. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, cool. Yeah. And uh, was school for tech or did you go to school at all? Like, did you go to university for, you said you went from marketing, right? So yeah, so I did a BBS in marketing and then I'd say about six months or so after that um, I could really see like that, that marketing was becoming online now and um, very much digital marketing. So I did a web development um, course then um, and then after that I did little kind of um, other courses, very small um, uh, kind of tech side of things. But I very much st stayed on the front end, so more the marketing, the user experience. Um, more so than delving into software and things like that. Cool. Um, so now that you're in more of the tech world and the agile coaching and the project managing and all of these things, do you do you miss the marketing stuff? Um, sometimes I do. I'll be honest. <laughs> more so. Um, around I suppose the visuals so everything in marketing is UI you know what I mean it's like jazzy you know it's um lovely clean design and color all that kind of thing so it took a long time for me when I was in IRC you know kind of all this text and, 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 and all of that and even on the terminals and things was, was quite different to me and um, but I think I, I do like the software and side of things. I do like seeing how things work, you know, and just a little bit of code and I'm getting so much up here. As I said, I was delighted uh, to upgrade my own uh, Google Chrome the other day. Um, but I do miss it. But I do see, I am bringing a little, little bit of that experience into CPE as well. And I know Stefan, uh, he's the manager, a new manager that's just joined CPE. Uh, and he kind of comes from a little bit of that background as well, with a lot of visuals and UI and things. Um, but again, we need to look at our audience and ensure what people are comfortable with and, and all that too. So, um, so I have I have thoughts about this. I have a design and fine art background. That's what I went to yeah, school. that's what I went to school for. So yeah, that was honestly a, something that took some effort to overcome. Was um, the format and the presentation, like you weren't around in these days, but we used to use something called track. Um, <laughs> and it was honestly, as someone who was like used to it, like I was in college and we, like at the university, we used Apple. We used, yeah. you know, yeah. like it's going from that to um, something that's not wrapped nearly as, as shiny or pretty. Um, and it's the UI and that, that. So I think that there's, I've kind of had this goal to like improve design and open source, but it's a hard one. There are some um, open source design groups, um, but I've always been so involved with Fedora, it's kind of hard to branch out past that. But the reason I ask if you were missing marketing is because we have marketing opportunities in Fedora. Brilliant. Very good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, and I was just, I was, I was looking at your presentation and I forget which slide it was. It was the one where you're talking about, you know, the things that you attempt to um, do for others in a very concrete way. It just made me think of my mentorship experience. 
Um, right. It made me think of the kind of things I think about and do when I'm mentoring other people in the community or now more officially through Outreachy. Yeah. Um, and I think you would be such an ideal mentor for Fedora. And actually, just to shout out Sarah Lewis, she is co-mentoring an intern for this upcoming outreachy session with a couple members from CPE. So I don't know what your role is in that, but I see you're involved and I'm really excited about that now because I hope you get so to yeah, interact yeah. with uh, applicants and um, share this kind of energy with them. That's that's yeah. awesome. Um, Shout out to Dick Brooks for that because Dick really um, supported me in it <laughs> and got on the outreachy um, program. Yes, so he was, he's it. the coordinator for the interns stuff for Fedora, so we definitely yeah. thank him for all of that support. Uh, he definitely gives me reminders about things I have to do, so yeah, that's great. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what do you feel like the since you've been on the CPE team, like, what's the, what do you feel like the biggest impact, like, the biggest impact that you've had? What, what kind of, you know, what categories do you think you fall in with that? Um, so when I joined CPE, they were an amazing group. Anyway, you know what I mean? They were, their, their hearts are a hundred percent in the community. Um, I felt for them, you know, sometimes definitely at the start. Um, you know, when I was introduced and, and um, people are probably unsure of, of, of what my role was, um, you know, they had a hat, they have a hat in the community and a hat in, in Red Hat, you know, so it's, it's quite challenging there. So I think I hope that what, I have, what I've left them with or, or what I, I'm bringing um, is, you know, I value all of that, you know what I mean? I just think it's excellent. Um, to see them contributing so much to the community and I definitely want to encourage them to do things they enjoy doing within the community and create space to do that and um, so I hope that I hope that I have um, instilled that in them and and, and and so they know that it's not one or the other you know what I mean it can absolutely be be all of it and um, so hopefully that's what I've done. <laughs> awesome so so for people who are familiar with Fedora Space we have this thing called the develop Devel list, or for people who are unfamiliar, we have the Devel list, and Sarah mentioned it in her, in her talk. And I mean, I can kind of tell why. She was like, "Oh yeah, about like a year ago, and we had some, you know, a lot of passionate people on there." And that was a really nice way of saying, you know, it's kind of like a dumpster fire. But like, <laughs> I guess I want to ask, like, how did you specifically coach, you know, the team who, you know, they're trying to do their job. Um, and maybe they have more understanding of like why they're doing what they're doing than the average Fedora, Fedoran or et cetera, et cetera. Like how did you coach the team through that? Because it definitely seemed like, um, you know, an intense, and I'll just say it, it was over the Give Forge. Um, it was an intense couple of uh, weeks that we had all together and it was pretty emotional. So I'm curious, like, you know, how did you support the team through that? Yeah, so absolutely, you know, it, 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 and I, I think the word passionate is, is a great word because it's only, you know, when people do get upset or are angry about certain things that are done, it comes from a good place. It comes from a passionate place. There's obviously, you know, reasons why and it's, it's to protect things or, or whatever that might be. So I always see any feedback whatsoever as a positive. Um, and I'm actually, I, I find it's, the more that we're open with that and the more that we're we become more content with just listening and just hearing and then i suppose to kind of come together and try and see what we can do together so what is our common goal what is our common purpose but not to um what would you say take those feelings um and make them personal you know they're, they're not they're somebody else's experiences that they're having so to try and um uh, i suppose detract yourself from the emotion that somebody is feeling and try and just try and see through you know where that anger is where that's stemming from or where that that disappointment is around it and um, so it would have coached you know the, the the teams individually and and also management and stakeholders as well on, on how we were and how we were uh, uh, communicating around it um, and using it very much as a lessons you know a lessons learned 
Um, so we're not perfect. You know, we're not going to get everything right. There's going to be things that we're going to um, not do right or people feel, you know, we haven't done right. You're not going to please everybody. But I think if we learn from things and then as we go forward um, to try and improve it. And I think the, the having the community happiness initiative uh, whereby we're coming together and, and seeing, you know, how we can improve things um, and having that, that survey there as well um, that, can, that can help us not come up against that in, in, in the, in, as, as much in the future. <laughs> Very cool. Um, thank you for answering all my questions. <laughs> so I don't see any questions in the chat right now. Of course, people are welcome to drop some in. But as you were here at IFA's, I'm sure you know what's coming next. Uh, I was hoping. <laughs> I was hoping you would read um, this little script for us. We're putting together some. Um, content after this mm -hmm. with with our footage one of the really cool things about working online um, this way for events <laughs> for events is we get all of this content recorded so here's here it is I know okay. we tried to figure this out a little bit yesterday maybe you remember and then we added in one more piece at the bottom we are fedora so okay. so whenever you're ready go ahead i'm gonna mute myself okay so i'm gonna say this in irish first so you say the first part in irish the part about yourself okay and the part in english okay so, so what is the what's the second part we are from different countries we speak different languages okay Yep. Okay, okay. The only bit I'm not sure about is I am a woman and I speak English. <laughs> um, well, let me see. Eva, do you know the, um, the translation for I am a woman and I speak Irish there? Google on standby. Okay. <laughs> I know it's terrible, isn't it? Can you like it? Tell you what you think. Um, it's, it's, it's a bit embarrassing that we don't know. <laughs> I think it's interesting. Oh, there you go. Do I have it on that man? Okay, perfect. Thanks so much for that. <laughs> um, so, dear Grit, it's Anam Thum, Sarah Finn. Um, uh, uh, Tommy Imakoni, Ike Kanik, Era. Um, is that me? August Lara uh, Vera. We are from different countries. We speak different languages. We are of different cultures. But Fedora unites us with open source. We are Fedora. Awesome. Thank you for doing that. Um, and thank you again for coming here. I hope you get to hang out and, and chat and see a couple more stories from other folks. Um, Absolutely. And guess what? I'll see you at work on Monday. Absolutely. Take care. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for your time.